All right, Captain, thank you. And hello, and hello again. And welcome to the Living Strong Television Network broadcast, where I am your host, A. Prophet Johnson. Call a friend, call a neighbor, and let them know that Prophet Johnson have got cooties on him straight from heaven. And I thank God because I've gotten blessed this morning. You say, well, Prophet Johnson, what happened? Can y'all see it? Do, do, do you see that, um, that, that black and silver, whatever this thing is, bracelet uh, made out of something that I don't know yet with the Our Father uh, uh, prayer in it? And it, Captain, I walked in this morning and Captain come out with this nice little whatever bag or whatever, slid it out of there. So, Prophet, I got something for you. And I'm looking, and I'm like, well, what is this time, Lord? Jesus, he want me to not some oil and pray for him. No, 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 no. And he pulled it out, and he said, I got a bracelet. I looked at that thing, and I said, oh, my God. And I just held my wrist out. And, you know, we got to stay six feet apart. And he got within about four feet, but I, I took my mask off. And, uh, and I forgot that I had a hat on. But anyway, here's the deal. He put it on there, and I tell you what, the blessing of the Lord surely make it rich, and I had no sorrow to it. And I've got a big old nugget, a big silver nugget, because I don't care nothing about uh, gold and silver and diamonds and rings and all that stuff because I had it all. I had every bit of it. Got it right now. Don't even wear the stuff. And make a long story short, I got that big old diamond silver nugget to match that baby. And you know God is good, isn't it? In a time of famine, in a time of trouble, he know how to lift up your spirit. See, it's the small gifts. And you got folks up there that, uh, Cap, you know, they don't, <laughs> you know, it's not funny at all. But they, uh, they broke into the Rolex places, stealing all the, ro all the jewelry, everything else. And I'm sitting there thinking, and I'm thinking to myself, God, you know, they got $100,000 Rolexes, and, but these are, you know, these are infiltrated. These, the Lord showed me something. He said, these are professional bank robbers. These are professional thieves. They're coming in all over. They're doing hit jobs, you see, and they're using the crowd to do that. So the government need to figure that stuff out, all this crazy stuff going on. But in the midst of all of that, I'm sitting there thinking, and the Lord said to me, he said, now, would you like to have one of them Rolexes? I said, God, no. I said, oh, God, no, no. He said, is there any jewelry that you I said, none of that stuff. How about tennis shoes? I said, none of it, none of it. I go to the dollar store, the Goodwill. You know, pay $2 for a pair of tennis shoes. Give a church offer to get one. And the Lord said, you see the difference in conscience? You see, just a small gift. What I've gotten from Captain today means more to me than anything that, that has been given to me in a long time. Because it's where the heart is that counts. You see, and so what is God going to do? God going to multiply his seed some. And God going to allow him to have insight into truth. And God's going to allow him to have insight into purpose. And the Lord's going to reestablish his heart and restore the vision of the repair of the breach in his life. And God's going to go back and get 15 years of his life, give him a Hezekiah blessing, what he lost, going to bring it back, even through relationship pain, trying to figure out future promises, children. Why? Because the dead in him shall rise. The dead shall rise. I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Prophet Johnson, all that for a gift. Oh, my God. You bring the prophet a gift, you receive the word. That's all there is to it. I used to prophesy to people for giving me a hamburger. My God, I go out, they buy me hot dogs. Hey! My God, I felt something up in here. And the Lord began to let her know, you know the car that you've been wanting? Oh, Prophet Johnson, I've been wanting to get rid of this. So God said, prepare yourself within the next week. Go get it. You see? And they go, they're driving around in a new car because they gave me a hot dog. You see, that's how good God is. And, and they, 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 folks, you have no idea. People just used to come and give diamond rings to the female. Just give a jewelry. Gave a diamond and gold and silver bracelets and stuff, never had, had gold and silver. And when everything happened, took all my stuff to the pawn shop, every bit of my stuff, every bit, <laughs> took every bit of it to the pawn shop, you see. So it didn't matter. So trinkets and gadgets 
uh, don't matter except the heart is locked into it. Well, prophet, that's enough on that. Why don't you just move on? You done talked about Captain long enough. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> everybody ought to praise the Lord. Uh, let's go ahead and get started um, from darkness to light. Uh, no, that's the radio message. We may tie a little bit of it in from darkness to light is where we're going, but we're dealing with the truth of darkness. Uh, Matthew chapter number 24. This gets a little heavy. So y'all stay with me. And I'm trying not to minister right now because the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and to bind up the brokenhearted and those that are bruised and, and to call at liberty and to set the captives free. Uh, Matthew chapter number 24. And Jesus went out. The only way you can come in is that you've got to go out and departed from the temple. Do you see that? And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. He's saying that, they, that, that, look at all these great buildings, New York, Chicago, Atlanta, Washington, D.C. Look at what we have and, and look at what we're presenting in front of you and look at what the world is and look at what man has built. And verse number two, and Jesus said unto them, see you not all these things. He's saying, see you not all these things. In other words, you see the buildings, but I want you to see more. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. In other words, God said, I'm going to tear the playhouse down before it's all over with. You know, these great temples of Jerusalem and everything else, they're coming down. And as he sat up on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him, verse number three, privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. And this is what they're saying. What is this? And when is the temple going to fall? And what are the signs is going to be? And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you, my Oh, Lord, I got to hold myself up for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Have you noticed the television, uh, the programs, uh, and what are they doing? Um, they still asking for money, uh, still begging at a time of crisis. Uh, it's all about money, uh, saying God will do this, uh, God will do that. Uh, Great and swelling word, uh, prophet is a uh, prophet line, uh, prophets a uh, prophet line, uh, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. What shall be the signs of the coming of the end of the world? For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. But the end is not yet. Is yet closer. To the end is not yet. Do you understand? So the end is not yet. It's closer to the end. Of the end is not yet. For nation shall rise. Here, here it comes. Against nation. This is going to happen. And kingdom against kingdom. That's why China, Russia, all the other nations are having a field day. We told you America would be destroyed from the inside out. We warned you about the igloo. Warned you about the fox and also uh, uh, the, the fox and the sly fox as, as well as the warrior. We warned you about everything pertaining to the white butterfly in the election of HRC. We warned you and we told you. We went all the way back to 44 and explained. Now, 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 now I tell you what, how, how do you feel now about 44, Pre President Obama? How do you feel now about Colin Kaepernick? Isn't it a shame right now? It is a shame. It's a crying shame. How do you feel about the football players, the NFL, the police? How do you feel about it now when you go back and look and see all that they tried to do but couldn't do? Oh, you better believe it. 44 could not do nothing, nothing, nothing for the African-American brother. No, no, sir. We, he couldn't do nothing because his job was to save the blue collar, the white collar, to restore the establishment of the white people back to their original order. Sold out to the establishment and celebrity status. And after that, the black man died in the street. Now, where are we? 
It went to the point to where we said enough is enough. No, enough wasn't enough. We gave it peace. We gave it this. But God said, oh, your videos ain't enough. God said, oh, the backstabbing and murder. And they come up and they're going to desecrate the person's name. Talk about drugs, alcohol, some pre-existing condition, lying demons from the pit of hell itself, born to do the evil that they do. You, do you hear what, exa- what I'm saying? And then after that, they demonize your name. But God said those cameras weren't enough. Those pictures weren't enough. Those videos weren't enough. Now I'm going to show you manslaughter. I'm going to show you straight out murder. And I'm going to let you see what they have been doing for years. And hunting and chasing and profiling. And I'm going to show you the truth of what's in the white man's heart. What's in the sellout of the black man's heart. I'm going to show you the truth of celebrity status. The government. The president. And I'm going to give you your heart's desire as I say it the prophet there shall not be do nor rain except at about my word and everything is following this word right here at living strong tv you can go to your prophets your pastors your iman your buddhist your hinduist you can go anywhere to your muslim you can go to your synagogue your capital you can go to all your false hellacious prophets nothing is going to happen in this nation and in this world except at or by my word said the lord That's it. Everything going to follow this word. Nothing else. You wasting your time. You wasting your time. Go listen to them great and swelling words. Heard one preacher say, I'm going to get up and do a series on the prophet Elijah because we're living in prophetic times. Seven weeks. You're getting ready to waste seven weeks of your life. Seven weeks of cootie up, Christianity, milkweed, water down, Sugared up, honeycomb, uh, uh, I don't even know no more words. Here it is. Verse, I got to read. Verse number seven. For nation shall rise against nation, uh, Matthew 24 and 7, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquake in diverse places. But it's not enough. It's not enough. Here it is. All these are the beginnings of sorrow. What? But we don't have no sorrow. Tell them I have to repent. And, and the Lord said, what, what do you repent for? I, have you ever been so blessed that you had to repent? I was so spoiled until I'm up there saying, God, Lord Jesus, I don't have anything to eat. I ain't got nothing to eat at all. Lord God, what am I going to do? And the Lord said, prophet, you just ought to be ashamed of yourself. He said, what do you want? I'm like, Lord, a lobster and a steak would be good about now. He said, that's what your problem is. You're so spoiled. You are so spoiled until you, I say, I don't know whether I want a lobster or a steak or a big juicy hamburger or if I want uh, greens and macaroni and cheese and fried chicken. I said, I don't even know what I, he said, you see, that's what's wrong with you. He said, you eat everything you want to do. He said, you're spoiled. I said, Lord, forgive me. He said, now, what are you going to do now? I went on ahead and, 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 and cooked me three pieces of chicken and prepared me a big old salad and after that, pancakes and eggs. And after that, a waffle on the side with eight slabs of bacon. Yes, sir. And the Lord said, you're satisfied? I said, yeah, I get steak and lobster later. <laughs> he said, you got the steak, all you need is the lobster. I said, I got shrimp. <laughs> Woo! Right, that God is good. I know that's right. Talk to me quick one time. I know that's right. Where we at? Here it is. These are the beginning of sorrows. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted. That's what happened marching in the streets. And you and shall kill you. It's either kill or be killed. God said the videos weren't enough, but I had to let them uh, videotape, just slap murder. I had to let them videotape openly the mur- because nothing else was going to do. And they even tried to get them out of that. Yes, here's the thing about it. Let me say this right quick. Captain, Captain, blah, 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 blah. I got to say it. Say it. Now let me tell y'all something. You sitting back watching the show, the prosecution and this and that, the police, talk about lock him up, convict him, send him to jail. Y'all better shut up. You don't know what you're dealing with. Let me show you how this works. Show you how the system is. Here's what they're going to do. They're going to go and pick their little jury. And they're going to get one little white, racist, evil, satanic person. All they need is one. 
that hate black people and don't care and he's a plot, he's a ploy, he's paid off one million dollars or she one million to five million dollars, you gonna set all these cops free because you gonna say that you disagree because you saw him still moving and struggling even after he was dead. So don't forget they, gonna, they can stack the jury with any hatred, racist that they want and let any police go free. That's how they've done it in the past. So why y'all sitting up there worrying about that stuff? And you got your great and swelling words coming in now. And what's God? The police should have been kneeling. They should have been humble. They should have been walking with the crowd. They should have been not racial profiling people all alone. But we are gonna get to something deeper than that, baby, little, little, little. Verse number ten. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Do you see it? And many false prophets. Do you hear that word false prophets? You better, you shut up. You're telling, you, 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 they right there on your TV talking about how much money they got. Walking through the airport, sitting up, and black people looking, who the Lord? Y'all just ain't crazy. Y'all just y'all still crazy. Y'all still, hey, Doc. How the game, how the prophetic conference, how, how, how the manpower. Hey, Doc! How, how the women conference. Hey, Doc! Throw another log on the fire! Because in the last days, God's always gonna have an Elijah. He always gonna have a Jeremiah. He always gonna have an Isaiah. And he always gonna have a prophet, Johnson! The prophets look just like me. They did what I'm doing now! Elijah cried out. Jeremiah cried out. And I've been crying for years. And what are they talking about? Protest. March. Prophet Johnson, have you ever protested? Have you ever marched? I've been protesting all my life. I've been marching all my life ever since I was a little boy in Mississippi. The only time that I wasn't scared was when we, we calling our mama. We wouldn't, couldn't call, didn't have no telephone, walking down the street. South 18th Street, Oxford, Mississippi. Little boys, four or five, just going home. And there come the white folks out there chasing us and beating us, beating little girls. And just so happened my mama was coming down the street. And the police came down the street in front. The police rode by, kept going. My mama stopped, and as they seen, they all ran. White folks, white guys, old Miss Campus college student, beating up eight, nine, yet ten year old children, practicing karate on us. My mama picked us up. We all got in the car scared, shaking. And my mama said, where are those bastards at? Let me see them now. I looked down beside her. She had her 38 pistol. And she said, let me catch them now. That was the only time I ever felt safe in my life as a little boy growing up in Oxford, Mississippi, chased, hunted, beaten by the white folks. And the only way I got out was to enter into the military running from God. You see, and I felt more safer then than I've ever felt safe around a police. Please, y'all don't know what y'all, that's just one story. One store, one, hundreds of them. We got hundreds. You see, you didn't realize the mental abuse. You didn't realize the affliction that you did. You see, and then you go home and you sit. And they want to know where it comes from, the kitchen table. It comes from the white man's kitchen table. Where he sit down and teach his children to hate what's called a nigger. You understand? It's taught at the table. Now, we're going to pay. I'm going to show y'all something. Captain, I got to read fast. Captain, I'm going to read super fast now. Here it is. 
Verse number 11, and many false prophets shall rise and deceive many, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. That into the end, meaning given, even if it gives your life. Believe in Christ. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. That's what, it, 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 180 plus countries and counting. The great tribulation. Wherefore, when you therefore, listen to this. I'm going to show y'all something. This is the president. This is what happened the other day. When you therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. This is, this is a symbolic representation is what I'm giving you. It's a spiritual symbolic representation of what the president did to the church. I'm going to bring that out now, okay? This is not the actual uh, Antichrist movement, all right? But this is going to deal with the false prophet coming forth. And it's a symbolic representation that ha carries a parallel to the meaning of what I'm about to show you. By Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. What's that? The, the, when, you, when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, Stand in the holy place. What did the president do? He went up there to well, that Episcopal church, got a Bible, held the Bible up as if to say, I am God. Here it is. God said, when you see that, then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountain. God says, it's time to run. Let him which is in the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child. Do y'all hear that? And to them that give suck in those days. But pray you that your flight be not in the winter. Y'all see that? Neither on the Sabbath day, that's the holy day set aside, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever will, ever shall be. Here it is. You said, Prophet Johnson, we hadn't got there yet. We're, 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 we're in something. We're in something. And except those days be shortened, God said, except those days be shortened, there should not, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Except for the ones that are chosen, people like Prophet Johnson, people like you, that are carrying the, the bloodstained banner. God said, I'll shorten those days. Folks, let me read this. No, my time is running. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or, or there, believe it not. God said, don't believe it. For there shall arise false Christ. That's what did happen to the world. Where's the power at now? People out there worried about marching, talking about COVID-19 and everything else. You see, <coughs> whenever you see a divine movement, such as what you're seeing right now, I did say divine. See, because, it, and they overlook death itself to face death in the life of righteousness. God is trying to tell this nation something. It's over, y'all. It's over. This is the end. Father is not going to go back to allow this nation to continue to do what it has done. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, verse number 24, Matthew 24, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. That's why I don't pay those great and swelling words no, no attention. Miracles, supernatural. People coming on talking about they went to heaven. Talking about God showed them this. God showed them that. But God never, you don't never hear none of them. All them old funny preachers on TV. 
They done met Paul and Abraham. All of them done been to heaven, done rode in chariots, done, done seen this. Have you ever noticed that Jesus never told them that when you go back and you wake up out of your vision and your dream, when you go back, tell the people not to hate. Tell the people to love. Tell the people to repent. Tell the people to forgive one another. Tell the people to turn to God. You don't never hear that. You always hear, tell the people to buy my book. Tell the people to come to my service. And tell the people to believe for something that I'm saying that's supernatural, that ain't got nothing to do with salvation. It's all about money and who I am. Writing all these great books. Great swelling words. Buy my book. Now, now, that's like I said, just like I said, how can a black police officer, I don't, the, even chief right now, all you chiefs out there, you African-American chief, y'all are, are farcists. You're flung farcists. That's what you are. Nothing but flinging old farcists in the wind. That's what you are. You're governmentational farcists. You're fake. You're $3 bills. Because you knew. Y'all knew. And you still know. You see, and you want to get up and talk about Senate and government. You this lie from the pit of hell. Your conscience is seared with a hot iron just as much as the white man's conscience. And you are implicable and just as guilty as the other. All of you. Now it's time to repent. Now it's time to repent. Time for the police department to repent. Time for the president to repent. It's time for the nation to repent. But God is saying, prophet, get ready, because I'm going to laugh. He said, I'm going to laugh even more. He said, what is that red flower? Red flower got the power to bring down that tower up. Even in this hour, I told man to see just what would be. They didn't believe my word. Now I'm on third. You say, Prophet Johnson, what does that mean? Prophetic, folks. It's silly. It's dumb. It's witty. Listen again. What is that in that flower? What is that in that flower? Flower, flower, rat, flower, 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 white, power, flower, flower, rat, flower, 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 got that. You say, Prophet Johnson, you look silly. You say you look real stupid. Let me tell you something. Whatever you do, don't even question or challenge what I just did. It will blow your mind, the revelation of what just happened. You say, well, Prophet Johnson, what just happened? Let me code it for you. Number one, Holy Spirit said no. He said, don't tell them a secret of the ancients because they wouldn't understand the song. He said, just watch them and let them live what you just said. Boy, this is something. I got to finish this. I think I'm about, I don't know if I'm over my time or what. It says, um, verse number, in so much that it were possible they would deceive the elect, 25, behold, I have told you before. God said, I already told you something. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. See, let me tell you something. The thing that I saw that was so sad, 
was all the folks building what called these Christian universities and Christian schools and getting people to register and building. They were doing it for their own glory, for money, faith healers, faith talkers. When is enough money motivation of speakers? You see, and, and see now they pass it on down to their unanointed children. You see, and then what do you got left? What do you got standing? What are you holding? Where are we at? <laughs> you you don't you don't see those pastors out there with their congregation, Captain. You I don't know where you been. You don't, you don't see them out there with their congregations. Wait now. You don't see them marching with masks on, holding the front line. You don't see them calling for peace and calm. But you'll see them at home, on a video, in their house, with their chicken and their roll of toilet paper. You see. We've been proclaiming this forever. I've been telling this forever. All history got me recorded of talking about this. So every bit of it had to follow the word with the four amigos. And I know y'all are tired of new beginnings. I know y'all tired of that clip. I don't know why they won't go back and, and, and kick that out and do a new playlist because y'all are sick and tired of seeing the same thing every time Living Strong go off. I can't control that. It's some of these knuckleheads I'm working with. A knucklehead inside, a knucklehead outside. Captain, I'm closing. Forgive me for calling you a knucklehead. <laughs> Prophet Johnson. That's me, y'all. You know, for y'all, for those of you who say Prophet Johnson, y'all, I am the coolest guy you gonna ever want to be. I have more fun than y'all would ever dream of. If you don't believe me, ask my children. My children will tell you that their daddy is the funniest human being, the coolest, the most loving, the most giving, the most caring the most crying, the biggest baby. He is just a big old mean lion, teddy bear from hell and heaven itself. That's who our daddy is. They'll tell you that. <laughs> Had so much fun joking with him. Cap my time up? Good. My time up. Y'all know that he cut me off when I start talking about my family. Here it is. For as the lightning cometh out from the east and shining, even unto the West, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And I love you too. I can dream about you if I can't be with you. That's going to be my time <laughs> when you repeat after me, take all this things for love. I'm a Baptist and I tell it like it is. Repeat after me, say, Father, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. And I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Captain, five seconds. The Lord said the word hope, hope. For every one of you that's believing and having hope, the Lord said your hope is coming within the next two days. Within the next two days. What you're hoping for is going to happen within the next two days based upon God's will. Fear not, two days, and watch your hope come to pass. I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Don't forget, this is darkness of truth. Bye. I'm wider, I'm stronger, and my hope is built in you, Lord. I'm looking back, I'm moving forward, not gonna let my past stand in my way. I won't give up.
Productions. I've been told.